Rossi and I'm an Imago Gallery Artist member and I'm here with Sarah Dawn who is our guest artist this month. Sarah has been painting virtually her whole life. She received her BFA from RISD and then became a mother and had three children. Um, during that time she painted in her basement and was talented enough to be able to have approximately three shows a year in local galleries. Around 1978 Sarah began to teach at Wheeler and she teaches there today. Uh, as well as paints and shows in local galleries. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, Anne Marie. As a painter, what I do is I focus on some kind of project and I just get so involved that I do one after the other. So I got used to painting in a kind of series um, and let it sort of change itself as it evolved. I used my kids shamelessly um, when I got, I got fascinated in reflections in glass. I did a whole series on that. But you, so you said you have one piece there that, that is, was influenced by Francis Bacon. Could you show it to us? So it's kind of emphasizing the musculature and the movement of the flesh kind of is in contrast to the flatness of the walls and door. And that's one thing I never could get that Francis Bacon was so good at. I mean, he was a, he was actually an interior designer before he was uh, a very famous painter and his compositions uh, and interiors are over the top on canvas, I think. Now we're gonna be looking at this six foot panel that's behind you. Well, the glass is distorted. Okay. So the figures, are it's it's uh it's all together it holds together i don't know if you can see that but there's a flow to it a movement can you see in back of me yes i can there is a flow to the so, movement and these are your family members right. in positions there, that's my daughter and my sister beautiful and most of the pictures are one person sitting in the chair and the other person behind holding an umbrella this is my daughter and me. The daughter and you in different positions. And there's a, there's a movement to the piece. Right, it's always the red umbrella. It's always the red and the white. And, and the amazing thing that that glass does to the figures. Okay, can you tell me about this particular panel? Um, well, again, it's the two figures. It's me and my husband, he's behind me. This is a courtyard in the middle of an old French farmhouse of my grandparents, where I pretty much grew up. And um, it was all surrounded by French doors that opened out into the courtyard. And those French doors were built, it was built in 1920, and the glass was still existing from 1920. Yeah, so there, so all the images, all the reflections in that glass um were <laughs> distorted because they reminded me of Francis Bacon and you look at his the distortions he does of the figure it, although it's less musculature and more form distortion um it's still it was the same kind of draw for me so it's, when did you start painting these fractured landscapes um about two years after we had moved here and built this house. And can you see the ceiling? Beautiful. It's, it's all angles, all the kind of thing that kind of has worked into my paintings. So you're currently exhibiting landscape uh, in the Imago show right now, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you describe those landscapes as fractured landscapes. Correct. And what's the purpose of fracturing the landscape for you? It changes the perspective and it actually is an exercise in problem solving uh, because to, you need to make the, the perspective lines and the shapes work together. And then you have to add color and make that work within the framework. So it's a, it's an abstract exercise, but yeah, well, which you do beautifully. Yes, in in your um, painting called uh, Sand Spill, right? Um, does is there any particular symbolism in that painting? I like movement. 
Do you do preliminary sketches, either plein air or in your studio, prior to doing those bigger pieces? I have, especially when I get in the rut um, and I'm starting a new. Um, it's uh, I never want to totally change, totally, but I want to go a different direction. And sometimes that's so hard and I don't want to waste the paint. <laughs> the canvas is too expensive. So I get the sketchbook out and start messing around. And that's hard because the scale is different. So it, 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 it just helps satisfy for a while. It, it doesn't really work. The best thing for me always just work right on the canvas and try to start differently. And, and so problem solve right there. Yeah. Sometimes, like some of the old ones I have that I don't want, painting over that is really exciting. And that can change the whole direction also. Do you always paint in oils? Um, yes, I always paint in oils, except for fun stuff uh, like watercolor. I do my cats. I just love the transparency of it. And I love, um, I love even using pen and ink with it. Um, and, and that that's a sketch to me. It isn't a painting. Do you, um, how do you get that glistening, beautiful sheen on your uh, landscapes that really give it that, that sense of glass? It's a varnish. I think the varnish does to the paint. You don't use the varnish. Your color doesn't look as rich. It's, it's the same on paper because I varnish everything. If I could varnish my clothes, I'd do it, you know? <laughs> No. Uh, do you have a do you have a standard palette that you use in materials such as palette knives or brushes? I still pull out a palette knife, but not for the big paintings. Those are all brush, and I'll buy a million brushes. Sometimes I'll just load up from Michaels or something because they're cheap, and use them to death. Um, I like um, I I I like sable. A soft brush, I don't like a hard brush. And I know hard brushes are recommended for oil painting, but I rarely use one. I like to manipulate them and then you can get them that some, some of my best lines are created with a wide brush done sideways like this that come to a, those sable brushes come beautiful point. <laughs> I have, I get free yardsticks from the hardware store for my line making. When I first started, I use tape and that's ridiculous. I mean, uh, you don't, you can't vary the, I mean, it's too thick a line if you use tape, right. you, you know? So I just lay the ruler and do the line with the paintbrush. We were talking before how you do some of your work on canvas and some of it on paper. And yeah. I wanted to know whether you use any different techniques when you're working on paper than when you're working on canvas. Um, I thought about that when you asked that. That's interesting um, because they're very different. Um, unfortunately, they're not studies for the bigger ones. Um, and size has everything to do with what I do. Because um, even the smaller, the, the small ones become more of a color confrontation. Um, just using a field and perspective, whatever. And then the medium ones start to play around with that composition because I'm weak in composition. I just, I just am not that good with it. Um, and that's what the lines have helped me a lot with. But the big ones, um, I, I have more of a focus on changing the things that go in and out. Not so much on the paper. It doesn't work as well. They have to be big to really, like theater sets, you know? Right. Folding doors, all of that. It, it works in the big ones, but it doesn't. So that means my approach is slightly different. And I can't sketch out, like do a small one and then do a big one. A drawing works. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done that. Otherwise, they're definitely different series. And that's why I love showing, you know, them both together because they're that different. It's a slightly different approach. 
Thank you, Sarah. I really enjoyed our conversation today and I hope to see you soon. Me too. I love talking to you. Thanks.